From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello, and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Jordan Gutterman. And I'm Danielle Gallion. Here's the news. After all the preparation and anticipation, the Dalai Lama arrived on campus for the biggest event Loyola has hosted this year. Hundreds of Loyola students and community members wrapped around Loyola's Lakeshore campus to get into the Genteel Center where he was speaking Thursday afternoon. You may recall that the event sold out in less than 24 hours with students getting all the tickets that had been set aside for dignitaries. As people lined up to get into the Genteel Center for the event, they were excited that such a prestigious religious leader was here on our campus. Uh, I'm taking a class in Buddhism right now and Tibetan Buddhism intrigues me and I'd like to see his views on all the other issues between different religions and I'm also going on a study abroad trip to Tibet this summer so it seemed kind of relevant. I am in line because it's the Dalai Lama and I actually missed a quiz to see him. I mean how often are you going to get a chance to see the Dalai Lama? So Obama was at Iowa yesterday and I would have to say we win. He's a really important figure, and it's obviously a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that I just couldn't pass up. Before the afternoon event that students attended, the Dalai Lama spoke at another session Thursday morning at Genteel, sponsored by the Tibet Center of Chicago. Two of the people who attended the Dalai Lama event were our very own reporters, Hillary Kenyon and Jessica Reynolds. We spoke with them via Skype afterwards to see how it went. This is Jessica Reynolds. Hillary and I just left the Dalai Lama's lecture at the Lakeshore campus. It was a packed house. Um, I believe a few students, they had a spillover line for students who didn't get tickets, and I saw them bringing them in during, um, during the speech. So a few students who didn't get tickets also got in, but it was a really great um, session. It, we got in the door a little late. We were supposed to get in the door at noon, but they were taking people from the Tibet Center lecture. They were still filing out um, way past noon, so... Everyone was waiting out here in the cold. The line wrapped all the way around the IC to the lakeside. So thousands of people were waiting in line to see him, but it was worth it. And he offered all of his Dalai Lama wisdom. When he came on the stage, because um, he was awarded an honorary degree, and when he came on the stage just to enter, um, everyone stood up and applauded. And he even motioned, he did this, to tell them to uh, sit down. So it was pretty cute. Um, there was a lot of students that um, asked all the questions. Um, most of them had to do with peace and how, um, what are the best steps to promote interfaith collaboration, which was the topic of um, the Dalai Lama's lecture today. And um, the Dalai Lama was a little bit hard to understand. Um, he did have a translator. Hillary and Jessica say while the Dalai Lama had a serious message, he included a number of jokes and was actually pretty funny at times. As early as this fall, the Loyola community may need to buy its smart water and Dasani off campus. As Anna Haling reports, the impending ban on water bottle sales has some students boiling over. While the idea of a bottled water ban is generating debate around campus, nearly 57% of undergraduates who voted in a recent USGA election supported the ban. That includes sophomore biology major Yara Shams. She says while the ban may restrict student choice, carrying around a reusable bottle would be an easy habit to pick up. It might limit it a little, but I think there's already stuff that we have to like remember to bring on campus, like our ID and our books and our notebook. Like there's no reason why a water bottle shouldn't be an extra thing that we're reminded to bring. Loyola Student Government has helped install refillable water stations in many campus buildings this year to prepare for the switch. But for junior Matthew Razik, that isn't enough. There are students who may not have a canteen on them but really want a bottled water and don't have time to sit at a drinking fountain until their thirst is quenched. Um, so I do think that with the recent bottled water like referendum on the ballot and if the university does decide to pursue the ban on bottled water, I do think there needs to be other options for students. A ban on bottled water sales doesn't mean students can't buy bottled Coke or Sprite though. New USGA Vice President Sarah McDowell says it's more an issue of social justice than of sustainability. These companies that are taking away the water from the communities by supporting them and drinking bottled water, we are hurting other people in the world and not allowing them the access to water, which is a basic human right, and it's something that we believe everyone should have access to. As Loyalans wait for the ban to take effect, many students can already be seen regularly using and refilling their reusable canteens. 
Anna Haling, Loyola New Chicago. Vice President of Student Development Robert Kelly says the university is looking at various vendor and dining service contracts. He says he wants to make sure the ban puts no added costs on students and aligns with Loyola's social justice values surrounding water. Loyola students are working on getting campus to prevent the deaths of migratory birds. Each year, one billion birds die due to window collisions. Science and society students collect dead or injured birds on campus and bring them downtown to the Chicago Bird Collision Monitors Association. This school has already taken precautions by putting bird decals on windows and cutting the tall grass that attracts birds by the Connections Cafe. The school has many problem buildings on campus that need to address these issues. The Loyola Phoenix reports that seven Loyola students were accused of trying to enter Hamilton's with fake IDs last week. Hamilton's is a favorite hangout right across from Loyola's Lakeshore campus. The Phoenix reports that police from the Secretary of State's office partnered with campus safety to clear out the bar of underage patrons on April 19th. In addition to the seven Loyola students arrested, one from Northwestern and another from Illinois State were also arrested, finding a total of nine fake IDs. The students were released while they await trial, which will take place in Skokie on May 17th. They will most likely have their driver's licenses suspended for a year and have to complete 40 hours of community service. Facebook is a lot of fun when you connect with old friends, but Maura Ash has a story of one Loyola student who discovered the downside of Facebook connections. On the Loyola Lakeshore campus, the Information Commons has become the center of action. Students study, catch up with friends, and spend hours on Facebook. While the website has been known to some students as a shameless distraction, the site has had lasting effects on the self-esteem of senior Kelsey Orton. Orton was harassed, threatened, and violated on the social networking site. She explained that it all started with a friend request from a former classmate. I started to see he was like becoming Facebook friends with them and I thought that was like really strange. Initially, he sent her a message and began commenting on her statuses. Before long, he started requesting anyone and everyone with her last name. My sister had asked me like, who is this guy? I just added him because you're friends with him and I was like, okay, why did you do that? <laughs> Kelsey explained that the friend request led to hostile messages, including a message threatening to kill her family. My mom came home, I'm crying, we go to the police department, the neighborhood police look at it, and they start laughing at me, and they're like, oh, well, honey, like, this is Facebook, you know, it's just Facebook, like, we don't deal with things like Facebook. Campus safety, however, does deal with things like Facebook. It's a very serious issue, it is much more complicated, because with the technology at hand, uh, we actually have to go to a higher authority for the resources that they have to try and resolve some of the issues. Facebook has forever changed how couples and friends communicate, whether they are college students or older. That was Maura Ash reporting. Maura says if you or someone you know have experienced harassment on Facebook, contact Campus Police or the Office of Student Conduct and Conflict Resolution. According to a recent survey by Statistica.com, 62% of young adults believe that Facebook facilitates stalking. Coming up, Loyalist students share their thoughts on life after graduation. And why discrimination against Islam is still an issue today. The college class of 2012 is in for a rude welcome to the working world. The job prospects for college grads have fallen to a 10-year low. An analysis of government da data conducted for the Associated Press reports that one in two new college graduates are jobless or underemployed. We asked students if they thought Loyola has prepared them for a job right out of college. You're not being taught directly how to do this stuff, but it um, kind of gives you like a new way of thinking, I guess, and a way to... It's, it's more about kind of being organized and communicating with people. Loyola is doing a current initiative um, that has to do a lot with experiential learning. And uh, one of the initiatives that they're doing is allowing students to actually run and manage their own businesses. Um, I'm a part of the organization called Loyola Limited. I think professionally, um, I'm definitely well above, I think, a lot of undergraduates. Um, not a lot of universities have a program like this. Although a weak labor market has left half of young college graduates either jobless or underemployed, 
Loyola students are confident their education has prepared them for success. President Obama is traveling around to universities this week addressing the financial burdens of education. Congress has been discussing a potential hike increase in interest rates for subsidized student loans. Starting July 1st, the interest rate could double from the current 3.4% to 6.8%. The president is appealing to Congress to stop the increase before it takes effect. If Congress does increase the rates, about 7 million undergraduates will be affected. Two Loyola seniors are making their dreams come true for a good cause. Megan Drissel and Charlie Trinan are headed to Africa for charity. They will be climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania this August, raising money for the charity Partners in Health. The charity aims at helping impoverished countries with serious medical issues. Both Megan and Charlie hope to use their biology degrees to help African countries as well as the charity's mission in general. They're working to um, really face head on the world's biggest health problems, whether it's AIDS and HIV, whether it's um, cholera or tuberculosis. Yeah. Really hit home for me was the medical, the medical issues across the world, and the work that organizations like Partners in Health do. That's when it kind of coalesced into something real. The trip will take a total of 10 days with eight of those spent climbing Kilimanjaro. Megan and Charlie want to raise $6,000 for Partners in Health. After 9-11, Americans changed their view on safety and along with that came incidents of discrimination against the Muslim people. But Angie Frazier reports, 10 years after 9-11, you may be surprised that some attitudes have not subsided. I was walking to school and there was a student and he was riding his bike and he went past me and he's like, he started cussing, he's like, go back to your effing country, you effing Muslim, and like, just like all this stuff. And it's, there's so much ignorance and hate and it's like, I didn't do anything. I was born in America, I am American, I was born and raised here, you know? Experiences like these are not uncommon for Muslims, especially the women. Before Sarah came to Chicago, her cousin told her of her own experiences that had happened to her in the suburbs. Oh, she told me once, like, a guy tried pulling her scarf off. And I was like, that's like the worst thing you could possibly do. Like, she didn't do anything to him, you know? And he literally was, like, yanking it off her head. And she's like, I didn't know what to do in the situation, so I just went home. Loyola professor Robin Mallett studies prejudice and intergroup relations. She says while these stories may give you chills, time and interacting together is what can make a difference and end the negative stereotype of Islamophobes toward the Muslim people. If they can have contact with a bunch of people from that particular group, a bunch of different individuals, they can come to see that they're not all the same, that they are, you know, a peaceful, uh, law-abiding uh, group, just like they are. Until time passes and attitudes change, Loyola's Muslim Student Association has an encouraging attitude to deal with the negative attitudes. Even if someone does say something bad or does, you know, like kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt or trying to be understanding on their part, like maybe they just, you know, have a, a misunderstanding that's been given to them by a media, by someone else, by maybe someone that they met that, did, that wasn't really practicing or didn't know all the rules. Islamophobia in America will not go away overnight, but if you take the time to learn about this faith and culture, you will learn that Muslims in America are just Americans too. At Loyola's Lakeshore campus, Angie Frazier, Loyola News, Chicago. The Muslim Student Association has many events year-round where you can come and learn about more of their culture and do your part, cure the phobia. The NCAA is reprimanding three former Loyola student athletes due to behavior against referees during the championships last year. The NCAA has issued public reprimands and other penalties on Eric Warren, Eric Morofsky, and Justin Kohler. They stemmed from verbal and physical abuse towards the referees during the soccer championship. The head of the Division I Men's Soccer Committee said in a statement, the actions of the players would not be tolerated. Transportation costs and other expenses have been since withheld for all three athletes. A little later, one hot spot in the city where you can find some delicious dogs. And next, see how the new block party festivities didn't go as planned. The streets around Loyola's Water Tower campus were blocked off for an end of the year celebration for both faculty and students Wednesday. 
The weather did not stop the Loyola community from coming out to the annual Spring Water Tower Campus Block Party April 25th. Students, faculty and staff packed the streets for a free lunch at various food stands. This marked the first year attendees could choose from popular restaurants like Taco Burrito King, Connie's Pizza, Potbelly and Qdoba. Program director Dana Bozeman said there is a reason for the block party changes. Uh, we just wanted to do something a little bit different and involve the community a lot more. Uh, in previous times, people have come directly out and gotten food and then gone back in. And we want to continue to foster a sense of community and interaction down here. So we wanted to do it a little bit different this time. Many stood in long lines to turn in their tickets for a lunch entree, drink, and dessert. But students shared how they think this year was worth the wait. I thought it was really awesome. I mean, last year they had the grill with all the stuff, which was good, but it was cool this year to, that we could pick from all the different food options and everything. It's just, it's just a really great thing to spend time with your friends and just kind of hang out. And uh, I thought it was fun. Uh, a lot of good free food, a uh, chance to hang out with your classmates after class, and uh, also get to listen to some good music. <laughs> there was some karaoke going on earlier, which was fun. Some advertised events such as karaoke and the climbing wall were canceled due to the weather. The second city is actually number three. A survey sponsored by Trident Gum placed Chicago as the third most fun city in the U.S. Atlanta took top billing while New York City is runner-up. Others in the top five fun cities include San Francisco and Dallas. Not sure where to go for your next Chicago hot dog? Chicago's very own Super Dog has been around for more than 60 years and prides itself on its customer service and product. Katie Knuckles shows us what makes Super Dog so famous. Super Dog started out in the summer of 1959 as a fun summer business for the owners Maury and Flory and they never imagined it would take off as quickly as it did. At the time, the streetcar ended right on the corner of Devon and Milwaukee, making this the ideal location for Superdog to open up. They were opened in May and closed the following October for the winters. Superdog was so successful in that few months that Maury and Flory decided to start up again the following year. This 12 by 20 foot restaurant quickly took off, transforming itself into a famous Chicago hot dog stand. Since then, Superdog has undergone several renovations, making it more efficient with their extreme popularity. Some renovation, built the dining room, small dining room, and we did the parking lot with the canopies and all, um, and kind of strengthened the middle part, because it was really just cinder block. Being one of hundreds of restaurants in Chicago, Superdog has managed to find its own unique way to stand out amongst the others. Anything on our menu has been tested, retested, and re-researched to be the best tasting, best served, and the best received of its kind. We're different because the dog is made for us. Um, you can't get it anywhere else. Super dog can only be gotten at Super Dog because it's our recipe. Um, it's made for us and it comes in the box with fresh cut fries, not frozen fries. We process fries every day uh, from a whole potato. We peel them, we cut them. We just began, I should say, our 56th year. The reason for this is our devotion to the customer. Number 94? And devotion to the product. Unlike other hot dog stands, Superdog has a fully operating drive-in. How are you? I need to up a little. They bring the food right out and hang it on your car window, giving the customer the experience of an old-fashioned drive-in. The menu has a cute, upbeat tone, and it proves to be just as good as it sounds. Um, I am enjoying a super chick sandwich today. Quite delectable. After hearing that this was one of the best hot dogs to get in town, I had to try it for myself. Oh, that's really good. The menu is not limited to super dogs and fries. You can order anything from chicken to fried veggies to malts. Another famously known product was born on a hot summer evening. Whoopsie cheesy one, chips one. The cheesy just came really from one night. My father-in-law, Maury, was, uh, you know, they were here uh, working and closed up and he kind of put together, you know, we had a super cheesy and, uh, you know, it was one patty of cheese and 
I'm really kind of hungry. I'm going to make two. It's family owned and operated. And we operate. We're here. We're working. Mustard relish, onion, pickle. Yeah. You know, we're in. My mother in law, Flory, is here answering the switchboard on Saturdays, taking orders. Um, I'm here all the time. Wheeling. My niece is our general manager. My brother in law is there as well. So we're in the restaurants kind of watching. So. Okay, you want everything on? Cheese crackers and onion? Right now, we're kind of out of family members to open anymore. So we have to kind of wait until some of the grandkids and great grandchildren grow up and see what they want to do before we go and kind of see where we're going to go. Super Dog encourages you to come check out the restaurant and try some food for yourself. Their original location is at 6363 North Milwaukee Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. You can also check out their second restaurant in Wheeling, Illinois at 333 South Milwaukee Avenue. Katie Knuckles, Loyola, New Chicago. Well, I know where I'm going when I get off work. I've actually never been to Super Dogs. Oh, it's so good. You have to try the cheese and the chili on How there. are their fries? It's good. I think it's Though, salt, but they're good. Those images, I'm telling you, I am starving. And I already had lunch, so. Coming up next, Loyola students showcase their theater talents. And see how some Loyola students hit the court to give a helping hand. Loyola theater students show off their talents at the more than just acting. Before the end, I knew his troubles and you were one of them. The New Plays Festival started on April 25th and is Loyola's own theater festival with more than 40 students performing. The play was written and directed by their Loyola peers. The festival showcases 15 plays similar to this play written by Alex Jacket and directed by Aaron Douglas. The quirky play entitled Murder on the set has four actors performing at the festival. All of the students involved in the festival have spent a lot of time rehearsing and perfecting their show for the audience. Well, we work, we work a lot, and I think, I think when we work and we put ourselves into it, I think people can tell when it's, a, it's something that we've devoted ourselves to. You can see the plays for free through April 29th at the Studio Theater. Loyola is home to many artistic students who feature their talents through different groups and organizations on campus. One of these groups is the Loyola Acafellas. Roberta Anglin shows us who these guys are and what they do on campus. The Loyola Acafellas are one of three acapella groups on campus. On April 21st, the all-male group performed at their event, Now That's What I Call the 90s. Their performance included songs like I Believe I Can Fly and Skinny Love. Because it's so much fun. Um, we have fun, the audience has fun. Um, it's a great chance to, to experience another kind of music, uh, experience some acapella music, and just have a, a nice cultured experience while at Loyola. This 12-member group has been at Loyola for nine years. Everything they do, from their rehearsals to their performances, is entirely student-run. Many Loyola students that I talked to after the April 21st concert really like the performance by the acapellas. Um, well, I mean, they've got a lot of classic skits, so I mean, like, they're really funny on stage. And they're all really charismatic guys, and they sing really well. So, I mean, I enjoyed myself. The acapellas included other funny elements in their performance as they reminisced about the 90s. My favorite part other than the songs, is the transition of the Pokemon versus Digimon battle in between. I think my favorite part was Stacy's Mom, the last song. Uh, it was really uh, funny and uh, seeing a couple of my friends up there was enjoyable. It's a sure bet the acapellas will continue to please audiences with their combination of vocal skill and stage charisma. Roberta Anglin, Loyal the News, Chicago. The Loyola Acafellas sing at many events throughout the year. Their remaining performances include the Founders Dinner and graduation ceremonies. Several student groups hit the court recently to raise money for a good cause. Jessica Reynolds shows us why students competed in the Ladybug Olympics, an event named after a sorority's mascot and the charity they represent. The best way to bring out Greek organizations is through friendly competition. That's why Alpha Sigma Alpha hosted a five-on-five -five basketball tournament and mini carnival to raise money for their national philanthropy, the Special Olympics. Members from other campus groups were eager to help the sorority's cause. It's a great event for people who aren't as fortunate and 
have a disability. I think it's a great way to show that we're all equal and we can all just come out and have fun and a great time. It's always nice to support other Greek organizations because they support us when we just had our ball drinks tonight. They're all out for that, so we like to help everyone out. Money was raised primarily through the basketball competition, which cost $5 per player. For a couple of bucks, people could play different games and activities. Loyola's Panhellenic Council offered henna tattoos, which were popular among the women, and the Multicultural Council predicted people's futures at their palm reading booth. Members of Alpha Sigma Alpha were happy to be able to give back to their national philanthropy. It's a cause I hold near and dear to my heart, and so it's great to be able to plan this event and be able to give back to them because it's made such a big impact on me. Like the motto of the Special Olympics, the basketball games were more about having fun than winning. Even if teams lost in the championship bracket, they kept playing in the round robin tournament. Win or lose, no one left the day empty handed. Everyone who attended was able to enjoy free pizza and soda, and eventually most of the treats left over from the cakewalk. The Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity ended up being the day's big winners. They'll go home with a first place prize package and bragging rights. Jessica Reynolds, Loyola News, Chicago. Alpha, Alpha Sigma Alpha ended up raising more than $600. This is the first year they've hosted the Ladybug Olympics and plan to have it again next spring. It may seem odd that a town from Scotland and a town from Oregon have something in common, but the towns of Dull Scotland and Boring Oregon are partnering in a marketing campaign. Boring's community planning chairman announced that they're creating a new sister city program with Dull. The partnership came about when a Scottish vacationer visiting Oregon took a bike ride through Boring, and throughout the towns of Dull and Boring should be forever link. One can only imagine the marketing campaigns. Yeah, I don't know how it would feel to live in a city named Dull or Boring. You know, me either. I think I'll just stick to Chicago. Yeah, it would kind of make me feel dull and boring too a little bit. <laughs> That's our news for today. Thanks for watching and our last newscast of the semester and have a great summer. You can also find us on YouTube or at ignatian.luc.edu. Have a good day and a great summer.